I have my mixture here of apple cider vinegar powder and citric acid powder from amazon.com and I put one teaspoon of each into 16 ounces of, of distilled water into this spray bottle from Sally's Beauty Supply. And the reason why I like this spray bottle from Sally's Beauty Supply is because it puts a super fine mist. That's all I need. This is going to help prevent damaging any of the coats while I'm using tools. So how often do you spray this? You're gonna spray this on the dog every time you're gonna to touch this dog with a tool. If this dog wants to go outside and go swimming and play and roll in the mud and all that stuff, you can also do a light mist of this before it goes outside. And this protects the coat from any breakage, from tools and from the environment right there. Um, it's also going to help restore the coat back to its original genetic form. So any stuff that you put on it, like harsh shampoos, conditioners, anything like that, that you shouldn't put on the dog, then it'll combat that and bring it back to its original texture. And what's going to happen is this is going to help harden those cuticles. Okay. And it's going to get deeper, richer colors. It's going to create a shine if that particular cuticle for those genes want a shine that's not what i, th I thought if something was egg yolk and beer oh that's like, another so, thing okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but wait there's okay. more but it's okay and i'll be able to write that down and get yep. it okay yep. okay so by using a bore brush this is mm -hmm. a board brush from sally's beauty supply okay what happens is this polishes those cuticles and it makes your texture and the original genetic um form of these molecules on the hair it makes them what they actually truly are when we start putting products in there different shampoos oils conditioners things like that we're actually altering what the original genetics are for this hair so after i brush this in i want you to feel the difference in that texture see how nice and hard that is very different yep. yeah yeah so I took what, what you had before yeah. and restored it to what it should be. So we're just doing top line, neck, top line, withers. That's it. Okay, so I got that brushed real nice. Then I'm going to set this aside. And the first tool I'm going to use is a 13 millimeter stone. And I will use a combination of a bore nylon brush and this comb here. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, go ahead and hold her head up. Okay, so the neck needs to look arched, right? Okay. And it's going to blend into the withers. So I'm going to take all the hair on this top and comb it to the left, 90 degrees. Okay. And this is going to tell me what that top line looks like or the back of this neck. Okay, see that hole right there? Mm -hmm. So that's no way it can blend into the withers right. with that hole. And so I'm gonna take it tight to the, the occipital region, the back of the head, okay. and then I'm gonna let that hair grow out and come down into these shoulders. Okay. So the way I can make that perfect is by going 90 degrees And anything long, I'm going to take my 13 millimeter stone and hold her head steady. I'm going to take just the tips of those hairs of anything sticking out long. Then I'm going to come down a little bit lower. And as we go lower, you got more holes. And I'm trying to make this even. Okay. I'm going to come down a little lower. all the way to this line right there. Now, once I get this, mm -hmm. I drop back to the withers and I do the same thing, 90 degrees. I pull my brush straight across 
And you notice I'm not coming down the dog. Mm -hmm. I'm brushing it across. So what happens here is I have this sticking out, coming in here, mm -hmm. and I have yep. all that bulk right she there. She shouldn't even be going out in public. No. She's got a hand-me-down dress on right now. Mm. So I'm going to take these longer hairs, and I'm going to try to create a straight line right here. So by just taking a couple of these hairs, and this particular tool is kind of like a smart tool. And what I mean by that is it can find the weaker hairs. So by finding the weaker hairs and not pulling everything, mm -hmm. it eliminates the chances of you creating holes when you're grooming. Now, the, the industry for grooming is prim primarily run by the pet industry. Now, what's the goal for a pet? Get it in. Get it done. Get it <laughs> done. Kidding, yeah. So the tools that you have, so keep your head up, the tools that you have for the pet industry, which people use for the show dog industry, are not the same. Because what happens is when you're grooming a pet, you're trying to, you're, it's a tool that's more aggressive, and you're trying to get it in and out and get the job done. Mm -hmm. With a show dog, you want it to look like it naturally grows that way. So you want to use tools that are going to help you in that and not be too aggressive in case you whoops. Mm -hmm. I'm only taking out the problem hairs. Right. So now what I'm going to do is the same thing, but I'm going to come in with my eight millimeter this time. This is a little bit smaller stone. Okay. And this is so I can come in with a little bit more critical pulls. Okay. Just tiny little stuff. The reason for the 13 millimeter is that when you're first starting off, it allows you to actually get in there and pull more hair so it's not hard on your body. Okay. The weight of this tool helps get in and take bigger quantities of hair okay. out where the weight of this tool is not doing this. You're using all muscle. Okay. So here you're only grabbing maybe two hairs. And that's how it's really going to finesse this grooming job on her okay so now that I've gone through my 13 millimeter and I've gone through my 8 millimeter mm -hmm. I'm going to use a three-way stripping knife and what this does is I'm going to use this kind of like a comb okay. and on a right-handed tool if I'm looking at my name on here that's more of a coarse tool mm -hmm. and so it's not coming in and taking a whole lot out and i'm just really moving this tool over some bigger bulkier areas okay. then i'm going to come in like a squeegee moving water down with where the tool is actually going right up against the dog okay. and i'm using my thumb very lightly to see if i catch any of these little stragglers that are under there and this is doing a finishing job on the grooming okay then when I come in with my brush look at how natural that, you know, looks. that looks so nice <laughs> <laughs> that looks so good and see that's because the tools are doing all the work yeah, yeah. right there now yeah. the way we're gonna groom our show dog uh, as far as a miniature schnauzer goes is we're going to do the neck, withers, and top line on one day. And which means a grooming session. And let's say we do it on Tuesday. Okay. So that grooming session is going to take five to ten minutes. Okay. So it's not hard on you. It's not hard on the dog. Okay. Then on Wednesday, we'll do front. On Thursday, we'll do rear. Okay. Um, so we'll pick a part of the dog to do six days a week. Okay. Monday, I always give my dogs off because after a show, we're tired, right. we're traveling and all that. So I'm going to groom this dog six days a week. 
Okay. So what's going to happen is when I come back next Tuesday, I'm going to do my neck, withers, and top line again. And when I do that, then you're going to create layers like shark's teeth. Okay. And that's rolling coat. Okay. You have two options with a miniature schnauzer. You can stage, which on staging, whatever hair you need higher, mm -hmm. you pull a patch of that hair out first. Right. I don't like that. The reason why I don't like that is because once that hair grows, then, and you haven't finished your dog, then you got to start all over. Exactly. When you're rolling the coat by doing taking your brush and comb and going 90 degrees and you're finding those hairs that are creating problems and then you brush this back, then if we do just a little bit at a time each week, then we'll get to the point where this dog has multiple layers like shark's teeth and all we have to do is stick to that schedule and this dog's in perfect coat year round. Now, so we get to the top line. I'm going to take the top line here and I'm going to move this down and our standard says that what what is supposed to happen for this top line right here? Well, what would be backwards but it's supposed to kind of tip down. of the withers uh -huh. to, to the, the base of the tail and by going like this 90 degrees that's going to create that exact look okay. but by using mm -hmm. traditional tools that other people mm -hmm. use and other techniques where a lot of times they'll go like this. Right, that's and then, what I do. Exactly. You're going to follow every bump, every divot, right. and you're going to show the judge that's what you see. Looks but, like she's got a toupee on. Yeah. <laughs> By doing the 90 degrees in the direction that the dog's hair grows, you see what your top line looks like. Right. So oh. here, comes out here, comes in here, goes Down. in there. And that's what the judge sees. The judge is standing here looking at this angle. So that's your top line. So if you want to make that top line perfect, then you go 90 degrees, find these longer hairs, and pull them. Brush your hair back again. 90 degrees again. And that's going to expose other hairs. Then you come in with your eight millimeter and fine tune a couple of hairs at a time. Brush this back, following the direction that the hair is growing. Then come in with the medium side and you're gonna find any loose stragglers going with the direction with the grain, focusing on any bulky spots Brush this down, and look at how nice and smooth that is. Now, it'll get better and better as we start filling in those holes. Right. You'll get great texture. The, the hair will look like it naturally grows like that. Now, what about she has an unusually heavy undercoat? And that's what this tool will do. Okay. But you don't want to just willy-nilly just take all that out okay what you want to do is find you're looking at her and if you see a bulky area mm -hmm. then you go like this or okay. you flip it around and you find any of that undercoat okay that's creating the illusion that it's too bulky right there so you're not just kind of taking the body and stripping no it out of because when you you take that which it looks like somebody may have done yeah. but if you take a, a tool like this and uh -huh. you take all the undercoat out then one you no longer have a double coated breed because okay. you took all that undercoat okay. out but the other thing is is now you can see every dip every bump every imperfection in that body okay. but when you do just the bulky areas then you can see perfect streamline of what you need to see on the confirmation and structure of this dog okay now we get down to this area here and this hair is growing at a downward angle. Mm -hmm. So to go 90 degrees, we have to go like this. And look at all that. We come in with our 13 millimeter, get rid of some of that real bulky stuff, brush it with the grain. 
go 90 degrees again. You can see a big hole right there. Mm -hmm. And take just the tips of a few hairs that are sticking out. Brush this down again. So here, this eliminates the uh, tuck up, which you're not supposed to have on here, okay. according to the breed standard. If you're just doing this 90 degrees, then you're not going to see a distinctive tuck up in there. And so the tuck up is this area this here, right here, okay. Which right now you can see, right. But once this is covered in hair, you won't see that tuck up. So let that grow out. Let that grow out. So if you just simply follow this rule of 90 degrees, it mm -hmm. shows you where your problems are. I'm going to come in here, just a few with, even though this area needs to grow more hair, mm -hmm. you're still going to have some long hairs in there and you still have to roll that coat to create your density. Okay. Okay, then I'm going to come in lower, 90 degrees. Take my 13 millimeter, grab anything that's really bulky. And the reason, again, the reason why I use this 13 millimeter is because if I can't grab it, mm -hmm. then that's not going to come out with that. And then you'll have just a couple of little problem hairs that you'll grab with this 8 millimeter, mm -hmm. and you brush that down. Now I come over here where the butt is, 90 degrees. Same thing. All the problem hairs just reach out and say, hey, look at me. And then 90 degrees again. And we want to do this all the way back here and create this really good texture to hold this yes. hair down from okay. flopping. Okay. So right now you've got, see that part's missing. We know we want to have a center line to the tip of okay. that butt. So if we take this tail and we go like this, this is going to help accentuate that butt on that shelf right there. See, this is way too much hair in here. I'm going to use the middle part of this comb. Come in with my 8 millimeter now. Take these longer pieces. And we're creating this angle of this butt here. And when that's up, all that looks like it's supposed to be like that instead of like all this right. flipping up saying look at me all right so what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of rolling on this coat and i want to see where the grain is going on this coat yes you can fit and what i'm going to do is i'm going to go 90 degrees since it's growing this direction I'm going to go 90 degrees like this and you got a little bitty like the sap or something in there. What is that? Other nice thing about this particular comb here is it has a special coating on it so it's not going to damage the hair. These are show grooming tools not pet grooming tools. So they're not built for speed. They're, they're designed so you can actually work on these dogs and not damage coat. Now, with conventional tools, if you use them on a coat like this, you're going to have a tendency to create holes. We're going to use this 90 degrees so we can see what hairs are the problem hairs that need to come out. And once I do that, I'm going to come in with my 13 millimeter stone. That's how I, what I use to what I call rough in. And I'm going to look for any longer hairs that are sticking up in the area that I'm working in. 
and by the tips, I'm going to pull those out. You don't want to pull out too much because if you pull out too much, what's going to happen is it's all going to go back at the exact same time. And in a rolled, rolled coat, you want it to come back in like shark's teeth and layer after layer after layer. Then I'm going to brush this back down again. Ooh, you're still pretty. And after I brush that down again, now I'm going to come in with my eight millimeter and I'm going to pick one to two hairs at a time. Just little problem hairs that are sticking up saying, look at me. This is the only way without lots of skill to roll coat on a dog without creating holes. With these tools, all you have to do is go 90 degrees. You're going to see longer hair sticking out. And with this eight millimeter, I can really dissect and pull just a few hairs at a time. The longest ones that are sticking up. And those are going to be the problem hairs. Ah, 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 ah. Stand. Then brush this back down again. And get that hair to lay down nice and flat. Now, a little trick when we get into here is, let's see, can you hold her head straight for a second? Thank you. When we get into this under part, it's really difficult to get this. And we want to wrap this down into this underline here. We don't want to just scissor all this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab her skin. I'm going to roll this skin over like this. I'm going to come in with my comb. And you can see where some of the hair here was being scissored, which should actually be pulled. And I'm going to take, since this is going to be more delicate down here, I'm going to take my eight millimeter so I can actually just grab a few hairs at a time. I don't want to put any pressure on this dog. And this is going to help wrap this right around the body there. Okay, see if we can get her to like put a hand right there. Now, according to the standard of this breed, you don't want to have the tuck up right here, but you've got to start creating some density in this area so you don't have a tuck up. And a lot of times people will avoid this spot and they actually create something that they don't want. If you see any static electricity starting to build up, then you can come in with your bottle of your mixture, spray that, and that'll get rid of that static electricity. Okay, angles are a big factor. So whatever you have to do to get to the spot that you need to work on, do it. So how is this 90 degree technique different from what you're seeing on your finish compared to lifting and pulling? Well, a pretty big difference because it, you know, before I think I was just, well, I know I was just trying to pull a certain amount of hair out, not really paying attention to the longest, and this makes it obvious which ones need to be pulled. I like the fact that with the 90 degrees, you know, there's no guesswork. Mm -hmm. You see exactly what hairs are the problem hairs, because they're the ones that the, are the longest. Mm -hmm. And when you work on those, it actually makes everything balanced and smooth and even as opposed to holes in it. I see a lot of people with this breed where they show up at the show and to get prepared to go into the ring, you have more time spent fixing holes. This technique can be used on any breed that is a harsh coated terrier or harsh coated dog where you're rolling coat. One of the things that people usually ask me when I'm grooming 
Is there like, you know, when do you know which tool to use, which brush to use and comb? Well, I like using all of them. And the reason for that is because when I do that, I'm going to find some hairs that are hiding down there that I didn't find with the other. So sometimes you'll see me using a comb to do the 90 degrees. And other times you'll see me using a bore nylon brush to do the 90 degrees. And you may even see me use just a straight bore. But if I'm fine tuning my stripping, you will always see me with the eight millimeter. Sometimes people will say, well, why don't you just get the eight millimeter? <laughs> it's like, well, if your dogs are in a nice rolled coat all the time, that's great. But if you're starting a dog off and you try to do that with an eight millimeter, you're not going to be holding a cup of coffee at the end of the day. And 90 degrees, I can go to the left and 90 degrees, I can go to the right. And sometimes you'll see different hair stick up. But the key is move that hair 90 degrees, whatever is the longest, pull that. And then next a week from now, when you're pulling this area, come back, do that same area. And you'll get a week's worth of growth in between grooms. And you'll be ready to show this dog year round. Session You pick a part for each day of the week. Your grooming sessions are only going to be like 10 minutes long. The other thing I like about picking a zone is that you can study that zone. Like, let's say I'm going to do top lines on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Now, Monday, she's going to be running around the yard. And I'm going to be looking at that top line. And I'm going to see if I notice any bulky areas or anything sticking out. And then so I do my 90 degrees where I see that problem area. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to fix that. And so if I know I'm going to be working on the body on Wednesday, then on Tuesday she's going to be running around. And I'm going to watch that body. And I'm going to see how that body conforms to what the standard says. And if I have to, you know, I'll start off with that and then I'll do the rest of the section of the body with that 90 degrees. And you really won't be able to see the fruits of your labor for about a good eight to 10 weeks. Okay. But then all of a sudden, once you start getting eight to 10 layers in there, oh my gosh, she's going to just absolutely amazing and the judges are going to feel that density and that's going to feel phenomenal and you'll have amazing texture nice depth of color and you'll be able to see a nice well-balanced dog so right now we're roughing in a thick area so i'm going to come in and since that is more of a bulky job, mm -hmm. I'm going to take my 13 millimeter. Because and, and again, the reason why I use a 13 millimeter over an 8 is because the weight of the tool will help pull these hairs. Where when I use an 8, I'm strictly using muscle. And so for big jobs, I want to come in with a 13 and whittle that down. Then after I work that down... I'm going to come in and bring this back over again, 90 degrees. I'm going to take my eight millimeter now and I'm going to grab just the tips of these longer hairs that are sticking up. So it's okay to use just muscle here because I'm only grabbing a couple of hairs. And so it's not a lot of effort on and putting stress on my muscle. All right. See how I'm whittling this mm -hmm. down? Okay. And that's probably all I would do for this session here for that bulky area. Okay. Now, one of the things I could do if it was an emergency and I was at a show, mm -hmm. then I could use my finishing tool. This is a three-way stripping knife. It comes in a right hand and a left hand. And I would use this one of two ways. Now, if it's a right hand and I'm looking at my logo, then I can use this like a comb. And that's going to see if there's any undercoat there. If I flip it over 
it's going to be more of a fine, but there's no undercoat there, so I don't have to worry about that. Now, to use it as a finesse tool, I'm going to place it so the blade is right 90 degrees with the skin. I'm going to use a very light thumb, and it's going to be like a squeegee working water down. And I'm just finding some longer, weaker hairs in this area that are going to come out. And then brush this down. So if this is my Monday, let's say my Monday section. Tuesday. Okay, Tuesday section. Right. Then I don't touch it again until next Tuesday exactly. and take it, even no matter how much it's bothering me. Yep. No matter. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the key, right? You're going to just take this wide part right here, and you can see those hairs separate. Mm -hmm. And you're going to come in with your 8 millimeter, and you're going to just take tips of these, and you're only going to be pulling a few hairs a day. I mean, you... You really, when you do a grooming session on a miniature schnauzer, once you get it to this stage here, I mean, it's not even worth sweeping the hair off the floor, <laughs> you know, when we get done here. Uh, but you're going to totally change the look of the dog um, after you get done. We're just taking these longer hairs. Now, the problem that you have with these other tools, the pet grooming tools, is that they're so aggressive that it's so easy to create holes. And when you make those holes, you're talking about months before you can fill that stuff back in again. And if you really like showing and going to shows, then those are not the right tools to be using because it's gonna take you months to get this back to where it needs to be. Like when, when we look at her six months from now, mm -hmm. oh, she is gonna be a stunning work of art. But if you use this 90 degrees, there's no way you're going to create a hole. Okay. Okay, so let's look at how this side is looking now. Okay, that's a little bulky right there. On that one, I'm going to try using this brush. This is the Bore Nylon from Sally's Beauty Supply. $9.99. A lot better than 40 And see all this bulky hair mm -hmm. here? Yep. Most people would attack this like that. I'm going to attack it like this. Good girl. And then I'm going to brush this down. So I'm taking some bulk out of that, but I'm not creating a hole here. Because the problem hairs are not here where you see that bulk. Mm -hmm. The problem hairs are the longer ones. And when I go 90 degrees here, they all show themselves. Mm -hmm. And then I find these longer hairs. Yes, I know. And I work on those. And you leave those other hairs alone. And that's going to create some nice density in here. So this area here... Anything where this cowlick is, mm -hmm. is going to be hand pulled that way. Okay. And then this is all your clipper work in okay. here. Now, one of the things in this breed that I don't see according to the standard, and the standard states that the chest needs to be plucked. But most of what you see in the show ring world is pulled. I mean, excuse me, is scissored. So I would, with her, I wouldn't you know, dramatically just take her down, but I would start working some of these hairs just with the tip of that eight millimeter and start bringing this a little bit more into what the, what the standard calls for. Okay. Now you want to make this hair dense here because what we eventually want to end up with is if we take the center line of this dog, just like this, wherever the back part sticks out should be the tip of her butt which confirmation structure wise is beautiful and then when we come forward wherever that is that should be your furthest point sticking out with your pro sternum right here so this needs to fill in a little bit more we need to get some more density here when you read your standard it actually talks about that it shouldn't be silky okay. so and it's going to be silky if you cut this 100 percent mm -hmm. But if you start adding some of pulling some of that in there too into what you're cutting, then it's going to prevent that from being silky right there. Yeah. 
So what we need to do is we need to blend this into this leg. And these hairs here, having good texture, are going to hold this down so it doesn't keep flopping up and saying, look at me. Now, again, I'm getting into more delicate work here. So I'm not going to come in with my 13 millimeter. I'm going to come in with my 8 millimeter. And I'm just going to blend this texture into this leg. And that's going to help hold that down. Stand. Good girl. Good girl. Ah. Now, one thing you don't want to do is create a divot right there. So it's just going to be a little tiny bit at a time, just pulling those tips to start to get some good texture coming in into this leg. Same thing with this back leg. So I'm going to come in like this, brush this down, then 90 degrees. I'll see some longer hairs and I'll pull just the tips of those. 90 degrees. See some longer hairs. I'll pull just some tips of those. Now I'm going to come all the way back to where this hawk joint is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull at these tips. Even though I'm trying to get this whittled down here, I work with these longer hairs and I'm going to work my way down. Now I don't want to make this perfect in one session. Because if I do that, then all that hair is going to grow in at the same time. So I just do a little bit. But coming down here to where this hawk joint is, I want to get some texture in here. I don't want this to be all just soft stuff. And that's going to hold this down so it's not going to keep saying, look at me, look at me, and flip up like that. So we need some growth going on here. Yes, I know, baby. It make, you want to make it look so the hair naturally grows this way. I had a dog at a show one time, and this lady came over and she says, Honey, look at this. This is what we need because you don't have to groom it. <laughs> <laughs> part of me was like, Seriously, lady? And the other part of me was like, Wow, I guess that's a pretty good compliment. Right. <laughs> okay, so when I'm doing this, I'm just separating these hairs. So it's kind of like a heel toe rolling this four nylon brush stand. So you can help her make her stand. I don't want any heat whatsoever. There we go. Heat will destroy the cortex. Heat will destroy the cortex. The inside portion of the hair. But what about when it's wet? The, then you're going to do it without heat. Now, the more you get this hair in better shape, the faster you'll be able to dry it, too. Okay. It'll, the beer and eggs will help cut your drying time in half. So when I'm brushing on hair that's delicate or I don't want to break and I'm kind of babying, then what I'm going to do is I put like kind of like a heel toe type thing. I'm going to put it against it 
and I'm going to roll this hair against the grain. And I hold the brush at the end like this. You'll see some people that hold a brush like this, but that's way too harsh. And when you do that, you can break and damage coat. The other thing too is you have to be really careful of the tools you use because some of them can make some microscopic um, cuts on the cuticle, which will then leave the cortex, the inside portion of the hair, unprotected. Um, I would never, ever, ever, for what any reason whatsoever, use a slicker brush on the furnishings of the miniature schnauzer. Wow. And it's for that exact same reason. The boar nylon brush is the best brush to use for the furnishings to get all the hairs separated. And I'm just line brushing that apple cider vinegar, citric acid powder solution into these furnishings to make this hair nice and strong. and help restore it back to its original genetic form. When we use heat, that's another thing that comes from more of the pet industry. Um, anything in the pet industry is get it in, get it out. And yes, it's gonna take more time to do it this way, but if you do it this way, you're not going to need a lot uh, or any hairspray, mousse, or anything like that inside this coat. The furnishings, when you're going to do some scissoring, it's a good idea to make sure that they're really clean. I would like to do a bathing session, even just the furnishings, and then do my scissor work. The biggest problem that I see with a lot of people is that they'll brush the outside, but they don't really do a good job of the inside in here. And there's, I really say that there's no such thing as just the show side of a dog because every single part of the dog is the show side. Look at that. Then we can check our work. I'll come in with the medium side of the comb. This comb has three different sections on it. Then if you're really getting to the nitty gritty here, you can come in and try the fine side just to make sure that there's no burrs or foreign substance in there. The wide side is the best part to start with to make sure that you don't have any tangles or snarls. <laughs> yes, baby girl. You treat all this like it was gold or platinum. Or... I want you to see the volume that we're getting here. That's a good idea. You can do that from the front. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to get all this hair 90 degrees from the center of this leg oh wow look at that over isn't that cool mm -hmm. so if you do this right you really don't need all that mousse yeah. and hairspray and any of that other yeah. junk Okay, once I get that, then I'm going to take my shears and I'm going to cut a straight line straight up the leg. 
So this is going to be one column right here. I'm going to bring this out 90 degrees in okay, case she's got a stand. Bring this out 90 degrees. And again, this is a situation where I probably wouldn't try to do everything perfect in one session, especially since she's a puppy. But I want to, each time when I do some cleaning and I do some drying and this hair starts to get in better shape and better shape and better shape, mm -hmm. then it'll stick out a little better. So here on the back, and you'll see this from the video, mm -hmm. is that it's a straight line from the side of this foot here coming straight up. Okay. And wherever that touches here on the inside of this thigh, that's where your clipper work starts right there. Okay. Now the cool thing about these shears is they're called flippers. So you can cut the inside of this leg here, flip them over like this, and cut the outside of this leg here. And you'll have just as clean as a cut on both of those sides. And you don't have to become a contortionist to do that. When I get back here to where this hawk joint is, then I want to make sure that I'll comb all this down and I'm going to flip everything 90 degrees like this. And this is how I'm going to get the back of my hawks to look perfect. I'm not going to actually trim on the back of my hawks. I'm going to pull it 90 degrees, very similar to what we did for the top line. And anything sticking up, I'm going to cut off. Okay, so she has to stand real still here. And then I'm going to go 90 degrees the other way. Mm -hmm. you're going to need to make sure that these are really super clean Then I'll come in with my eight millimeter stone and I'm going to blend this into my leg. This is going to really show me this back angulation right here.
but when we get over to here, we bring all this from the inside out. That's a big hole. Yep. We trim this. Trim this straight up. Okay. And then once we get into here, we cut in towards the center of the body. Okay. Now the other thing you can do too is keep every once in a while come in with your eight millimeter, mm -hmm. pull a little bit, like take everything 90 degrees like this. Anything long, just pull a couple of hairs. Okay. 90 degrees like this. Anything long, just pull a couple of hairs. 90 degrees like this. Anything long, just pull a couple of hairs. Anything like this. Anything long, just pull a couple of hairs. And then that'll start to bring in some texture so okay. it's not silky. Okay. okay, so what we need to do is we need to come into here, get these eyebrows out of the way, and we're going to pull these hairs here in an upward fashion. Okay, which one are you using? The 8 millimeter. Okay. And we're creating a fan. Okay. So it's just going to be a fan of hair right here in this spot. Okay. And what that's going to do is that those are going to be harsher hairs. And it's going to come into where this eye is, like this, where this fan is. And that's going to hold everything down and make it so it has hardly any stop. It's just going to be a slight stop right here. So it's going to accentuate what that stop is. Okay. And it's also going to prevent, because you're controlling the length of those hairs, it's always also going to control not holding this down. I mean, pushing these up. Mm -hmm. And it's just a couple of hairs at a time. A little bit in here. Then you come over to this side. Ah, quit. Good girl. Good girl. And that'll help that out tremendously having that little fan right there. Okay. Okay. So I use I like to use this tool here. And what I'm gonna do is just very lightly with very light thumb pressure I'm gonna pull this into this chest and this blends all this stuff here so you're actually still sticking with the standard where it says you need to pull the hairs on the chest instead of clipper um, up in here is where you're gonna do your clipper work up here but knowing that you've got to get this growing up in here so the center line puts the prosternum where it needs to okay. be okay but I want you to kind of come in here and you're gonna feel how nice it is to pull this hair here and keep this you want this to basically be color but not really length of hair uh. <laughs> I am falling in love with this girl <laughs> yes I am you are beyond sexy. <laughs> <laughs> All right.